such violent shaking. I just kept seeing my prayers. You could hear these waves coming in. The entire port facility has just been wiped out. She thought like you're never going to quit. It just sounded like a big freight train rushing through. I watched the house crack open. Everybody thought we were gone. I looked around me and I thought, well, this is the end of the world. Both the oil tanks and docks are on fire at Seward. The helpless feeling I've ever had in my life. Because there was no safety anywhere in the world. We thought it was the end of the world. There was, there was no question in our minds because it, all hell was breaking loose. On a seasonable spring day in Anchorage, population 64,000, it's 28 degrees and it's been snowing and raining. School is out for the holiday. Offices closed early, so the streets are quiet. In places like Seward, Kodiak, and Valdez, fishing vessels are tying up for the weekend. At the dock in Valdez, the 10,000-ton freighter SS China is unloading much-needed supplies. Two crewmen aboard use their new 8mm camera to film excited people on the dock below. At an office in Anchorage, two attorneys, a pathologist and a court reporter, prepare for a case. The time is 5.36. Well, some respiration are then instituted and for all practical purposes, then the patient was alive again. <clears throat> is that clear? On the China, it's 20 minutes before quitting time when the crew feels a sudden lurch. The mate, he was just coming to run up the gangway and he said stay aboard he said it's an earthquake so about that time we started up in the air went uh, and the old dock started to go like a cement mixer a huge subterranean chasm opens up alongside the china the harbor empties and the dock is swallowed up moments later a huge wave comes crashing in to fill the void i remember going out into the street and looking down this way and I heard the um, China uh, whistle blow as if they were leaving. And I knew that they hadn't been there long enough to unload because they always stayed three to six hours. And they'd just gotten there. And I thought, boy, that, that's riding awful high in the water because I could look down and I could see it up. But it didn't dawn on me what was happening. The camera still rolls as the China is raised 30 feet on the wave, then crashes into the heart of town. Everything was flopping. The telephone lines were, were busting and, uh, and electric live wires were all around us. It was, it was like we're surrounded. And I, and I remember uh, saying that uh, uh, we're trapped. We're trapped because there was no place to go. Jerry Beleza, a longshoreman at the Valdez dock. Everywhere I looked was someplace I didn't want to be. I looked down at the waterfront. There was water coming up. I looked up the street. There was water coming down because the surface water was real shallow over there. And uh, the telephone poles about all three feet underneath the cross arm were snapping one right after another right down the street. It sounded like a cannon shot. Well, there was power lines coming down, and uh, I decided I'd better start moving. Bernard Whalen watches as a man on the splintering dock tries to get away. And he was on the dock at the time, and uh, when the earthquake came, well, I saw him pick his two, two little kids up, and, and 
he never made it. 